would have posted that video because in the end, it kind of gave she gave up. She was just like, pay it, right? She was just like, oh, I'm a, like, what was she going to put on? Like, <laughs> would you like to continue three days before Christmas? I really don't mind. I'm good. I'll just put this on. I ain't never been misgendered. And the only time people have misgendered me is when they have tried to try me. And you can't. You can't yes. try me. You can't. Baby, I have, the the, um, I have a dick between my legs and I slay the trade. <laughs> I have a dick between my legs and I slay the trade. I bend the trade over. I'm doing the bending. You calling me he, him <laughs> is not going... Huh, I'm doing the bending. I'm doing the bending. Ain't nobody bending me over. Oh, so so you doing the bending? You may not know that I am trans, but you know. You look at and you look at her and you know that this is a transgender woman. You know. You see the long hair and her features. You know she wants to be called she her. In in the words of Sheree. Sheree Whitfield, whatever happened to customer service? Whatever happened to customer service? Like, whatever happened to customer service? Like, <laughs> somebody truly, had like, to say what, it. Whatever happened to customer service? Can you believe that we just interviewed Shauna fucking Brooks? <laughs> well, girl, you interviewed her. I was just basked by all of the the wealth of information she was giving us i was like oh my god shauna i love sorry, her i spoke i spoke too much didn't i i'm sorry i cut you off no you were you were giving you were giving you were in your gail king bag bitch <laughs> i was giving you oh my suzanne god. from wendy Su oh <laughs> i hate you <laughs> Uh, I love you. I love you so much. Do you want to quickly talk about the uh, the Tommy Dorfman situation? Oh, bitch! Let's talk about it. Let's get in. Yo, Shauna's. We need to talk Shana's about that. Fucking Shauna's. Shauna's amazing. I mean, like she's fucking amazing. And the fact that she wants to come back is like wild to me. And I just love. I mean, let me just kind of say, like, I love. Like a big part of being a transgender woman is being a sex worker and there are very few transgender women who have not done sex work um, unless yeah. they're white and because white people have so much privilege. Um, so they, a lot of white people, you know, just have access to generational wealth. I mean, and you know, um, that's, that's an excellent parallel into the, Tommy Dorfman situation. Oh, I, let's. <laughs> okay, you go ahead and take it. You go ahead and take it. So basically, Tommy Dorfman was at a um, was it Delta or American Airlines? It was Delta, and she was going was to Delta. Atlanta. Okay, I want to. And so basically, she was filming as the 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 gate agent. She got into a scuffle with the gay agent and the gay agent was misgendering her. And then when she tried to check him, he kind of gagged her a little bit. And I was just like, wait, I got you it. Get, you get kicked out for me. Okay. Play it, play it, play it. But let's play it. Let's play it. And this is, I mean, the, the, vi the title of the video tells you so much. And what about when adults employ misgenders I'm you so intentionally? Sorry, while, while she's talk, while he's talking, you're talking. You just misgendered me again. Okay. Multiple times, gotcha. both of you have. Sorry. It wasn't intentional, but if you yeah. want to take it personal, that's also- Well, she did do it intentionally twice. Gotcha. You're talking to me too. You said she, and then you mm -hmm. said he. You're being condescending. And if you want to continue, Ooh. I have full authority escort you out the building right this moment, if you want to play that game. <gasps> okay. Would you like to continue three days before Christmas? I really don't mind. I'm good, I'll just put this on. And what about when adults- Gag. Oh no. Okay, so you give me your read on the situation and then I'll give you mine. And then we also should look at what Dominique Morgan said as well. Uh, so go ahead, go ahead. I I want to know, like, wait, let me ask this question. Was was the inciting incident? What was the inciting incident? Like that is that's also a part, that's also a part of the issue. We don't know what the inciting incident is because she has only showed, she's only released a 30 second clip. You know, I don't. Uh, I don't know if I would have posted that video, or and or. I mean, I don't know if I would have posted it, like because 
in the end, it kind of gave she gave up. She was just like, pay it, right? She was just like, oh, I would, like, what was she going to put on? Like, <laughs> it gave that she paid it. <laughs> you know what? This is honestly, this is so layered. It's so layered. And I mean, Dominique definitely hints on this when we pull up Dominique's video. But what's really interesting is that, I mean, especially growing going up with, because I grew up, you know, in New York City with the Black trans girls, like, it's no shade. We didn't really give kanja to people who misgendered us. Like, you know, like, we, and we did what we had to do to get by, you know, like, we, we kind of like, if someone misgendered us, you know, we would, sometimes we would just take it, you know, to like, get through the day, which is an interesting capacity of it. But also... I think that like him misgendering her is wrong. He did he did do it on purpose the second time. But also I was just like, wait, her being condescending will get her escorted out? I would have been condescending more. Like he mama. tried it. He tr He's first of all, out. I'm sorry. He He's tried it. I watched out. that video and I got really upset. Like, okay, look, I'm not even gonna hold you. <laughs> I ain't never been misgendered. And the only time people have misgendered me is when they have tried to try me. And you can't, you can't yes. try me. You can't, you can't try yes. me. L L literally Same. the only time someone has key hymns me is when somebody was trying to like, they thought they were getting me together. Baby, I have a dick between, the, um, I have a know, dick between my legs and I slay the trade. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dick between my legs and I slay the trade. I bend the trade over. I'm doing the bending. You calling me he, him is not going. Huh? I'm doing the bending. I'm doing the bending. You calling me he. You calling me he him isn't going to get me together. So people stop calling me he him a lot. People let that shit go immediately, quickly. The only people that that he hims me were when I transitioned in freshman year of high school. Uh, well, you know, uh, people. I say transition. I've had been transitioning for a really long time, but when I put on my wig. Those are the people who try who called themselves getting me together, but that ended pretty quickly. And then when it was my my sisters and my mom, every time they would slip up with my pronouns, I was dead the conversation and we would have to address it then and there. It was annoying for them. It was, I'm sure, seemed condescending, but having my pronouns correct is a necessity. Now, understand that a part of this becomes, and we have to take privilege into account, right? Let's look at our sis, right? But our sister is going to be, and should I follow her for in a solidarity? No, she has a million followers. She's white. She's fine. Our sister, right? This is this is our sister, Miss Tommy Dorfman. Our sister is, you know. She doesn't have the cis assuming privilege that I have and that Nyla has. And so people are going to misgender her. And I felt really bad listening to that. I, I, I like, I felt him misgendering her was, it was too much. It, I'm just going to let you know, you see, you can tell, but here's the thing. You may not know that I am trans, but you know, you look at, and you look at her and you know, that this is a transgender woman. You know. You see the long hair and her features. You know she wants to be called she, her. You know what's really interesting, too, is exactly everything you said. And I feel like people just do it to be a dick. You know, people don't like trans women. And when they see a trans woman, they do it to be a dick. Because if you think about it, when you are a feminine gay boy, especially back in the day, when you were, before you found out your transness, before you did anything, as an insult, people called you she. Why you acting like a bitch? You talk you act like a girl, you sound like a girl. And now all of a sudden, I'm a whole, she a whole man? She's a whole man. So She's so a whole, the most masculine nigga to ever do it. <laughs> she's the most masculine man to ever do it. So, and- and that's, 
and that's you know that's my my annoyance especially with the black community and pronouns like black people act like we have it and people of color we act like we have pronouns pronouns are such a hard thing and we're stickler for pronouns and grammar but we're also the the community who who revels in abstracting of twisting of slangifying the english language we do that with ease but we but we pretend like calling someone their chosen name calling someone their 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 pronouns we act like first that of is all so first and of all also, don't stop there let me finish we also we also act like calling trans women by their names their chosen names is hard but we call all these rappers their chosen names don't stop there no oh okay yes and me yes and me. don't stop don't this is what nyla and i do when we're writing yes and so no no no. don't stop there it's not just the rappers names how many times have you heard oh this is my this is my african name i'm reclaiming my my african name i don't i no longer want to be called williams i no longer want to be called white i have I, my name is now x my name is now omalulu my name exactly huh. like we also you oh go ahead go ahead like i mean even 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 niggas who are not even of note who we see in the neighborhood we call them whatever they tell us to midnight so we, period whatever whatever they tell us to so this this whole this whole pronoun thing this whole name chosen name thing to me is a really moot conversation and you're just you're really just being hateful because when you see when you saw miss tommy walking through the airport even if you clocked her tea you knew what she was giving and you knew it and you knew what pronouns that she wanted you were trying it you were cool. trying it also, also to expand the African American conversation, at Black people have always, we've always changed our the language in order to better identify ourselves. We have gone yes. from slaves to enslaved people to uh, fr free, colored, fr colored free Af yeah, uh, uh, African American, uh, Black, Black. We're African, and now. And now black brown skin, I mean, it has just continued the net, the net, the language change. And I have seen white people, my, my white science teacher had the audacity to say, well, back in the day or no, that now it's offensive to call someone uh, colored, but back in the day, that's what y'all wanted to be called. Y'all wanted to be called colored. And now you're people of color. I'm confused language is we are that is what makes us human that's a part of what gives us personhood yeah. and makes us human beings is the fact that we communicate with language and not fucking barks the idea that oh this it's too difficult it's too this you, <laughs> you hate trans people <sighs> just just say you hate trans people and I fucking mean, go it's simply that easy but you know what? I wish it could have been a situation like just ask your other colleague to help her then. If you're that For if real. you're if you're that pressed, just ask your other colleague to help you. But but it's, you know but it's how dare you? It's first of all, you want to know the real gag is they told that and I'm not reading I'm not reading nobody. I'm not reading nobody. His job is a great job. That man is employed. I'm not reading nobody. But what they told him is the Tommy Dorfman's, let's bring up the photo again, the, 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 the trannies, the Tommy Dorfman's of the world, these freaks, these freaks, right? These are, these are the people who belong on Jerry Springer. They belong dead in the gutter. They don't belong. And I imagine sister was probably, she's white. So I'm sure she was probably taking business class or first class on a Delta flight. They don't belong. Uh, you're not supposed to be serving them. You're supposed to be uh, persecuting them, you know, but he found himself. He probably found himself in a situation. And I listen, sis, sis could have been entitled as fuck. He said that she was, con her crime was condescension which that's what he said out of his mouth was that her crime was that she was 
condescending. So that that is her crime, not condensation, <laughs> condescension. Her, that that was her crime. And so I'm is it possible that maybe he felt I shouldn't have to serve someone who I That's deem clearly what he felt. Who I deem belief me and a, a person of the underclass. That's what it gave to me. And he wanted to he wanted to fag out that's 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 really what it was at the end of the day i mean i want to know what happened before i want to know why mama said oh i'm gonna put it on like what i think it is is because what i think it is is because mama mama lifted up that camera and i don't know first of all first of all miss lady miss tommy let me speak to you specifically you picked it up that camera, but you wasn't ready for that smoke and for the, for that real heat because that nigga was ready to tumble with you, boo. He was, he, he was, was. Like, first of all, not him saying I'm going to call Port Authority. Did he say I have full authority or I'm going to call the Port Authority? No, he has full authority. But you know what? <laughs> the way he looked at the camera, he gave you one of, he gave you one of those. He gave her, I'll meet you at the door. I'll meet you. I was waiting on you at the door. So look, he gave her that. I, I don't think Mama was was ready to stand on business. I think I think Mama <laughs> just wanted to. No, really, I think Mama just wanted to say, you know what? This is some misgendering that is happening. I want to get it on tape. But I think ultimately, she was always going to get on her flight. She's going to Atlanta, so I don't know her life, but I know about Atlanta and she's an actress actresses film TV shows and movies in Atlanta I've filmed several she, I think she was heading home because I think she's from Atlanta oh she is she home. yeah she's an oh. Atlanta girl I would have never known no but know. you know what the key key moment what was? is what is she should have knew better the key key moment was I mean it wasn't a key key but it was a key key where he was just like now I know three days before Christmas Christmas <laughs> if you want to do this three days before Christmas, we can. Why did you say no? I was, like, what was I want to know what like what happened? Do what you think happened? that do you think that the lady because there was a lady who probably who was misgendering her first? Do you think Miss Tommy gave very much she's misgendering me, call your boss, and he was the boss? Like, do you think that's what it was giving? Because she probably what? gave well, because well, you were saying, why didn't he have another coworker come over? He probably was the second called coworker. Oh, he probably was. He probably was the second called coworker. I don't know if he was, I mean, he could, could he have been the manager? Sure. But he, it seems as though he was at least the second person that was called over. And I think instead of defusing the situation, as men need to learn to do, Men need to learn how to de-escalate and defuse the situation, not add to it, because his thing was, you know, and honestly, I don't mean to be like, I mean, may, 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 maybe maybe you can you could read me if you want to. I, in my personal opinion, I feel like how I would have dealt with the situation is that I would have went over, I'd have been like, I'm sorry, what's, what's going on? What's the issue? Okay, let's just, my love, why don't you go over there? Let me handle this. I would have checked her out. I would, you could use no pronouns. You could say, what's your name? Your name's Tommy. And if you're transphobic, you can call her Tommy all day long, right? So you could be like, okay, yeah. Tommy, well, here's your Tom, to, me, Tommy, here's your ticket. And here, you know, and you can send Tommy on Tommy on their way. And that's how I would have handled it. I would have just defused the situation because it doesn't serve, it will never serve you in your job to embattle a, a, um, a customer. Yes, he may have authority to send people away, right? But if push comes to shove, and this is where we have to go to the next video, if push comes yeah. to shove, this white woman with her 1.2 million followers, right? And if you see her as a man, let's let's just go, let, let's just stop there. If you see Tommy as a man, I don't know if you want to pick a fight with a white man on your job. You know what was interesting, and Dominique kind of spoke. But she's to not this. a man; she's a woman. She's she's a woman. Dominique kind of spoke, to this, which I hinted to at the beginning about 
like trans women who like the, the piece about black trans women who get misgendered and Dominique Morgan and she spoke about how she gets misgendered a lot of times too and how she handles it and she and then she paralleled it with the racial dynamic of them being people of color and Miss Tommy being like you know a really privileged trans woman because I mean to add some context to it Tommy Tommy is that girl if you if you I don't follow her online you know I like personally try not to follow like white people, you know, unless I really You just know saw her. me choose not to follow her because I was like, she's white with 1.2 million. She's it's, fine. I mean, for me, for me, it's cognitive dissonance, you know, it's the cognitive yeah. dissonance of it all. Like it's no shade. I need my feet to be, you know, to be a, a, a firm. To reflect to us. I mean, not, not just to reflect me, but like to be affirming of like my self-esteem because social media it plays a part in how we see ourselves so it's no shade i don't i don't follow you know don't follow the kim kardashians i don't like if you're if you're a white girl and i follow you i have to know you in real life one but two back to um miss tommy if you look on her instagram she's kind of the girl like she's she's friends with taylor swift she is She's partying with all of, she's partying with all of the like upper echelon, cool, like really. Yeah, oh, she's a director. She's also a director. Like she's what? She, she's she's from that like upper echelon world, you know. Like she she, I mean, it's a different time, you know. She's that girl. I didn't know that she was friends with T Swift. I oh mean, uh, yeah, all these fucking photos. She posted a photo with Taylor. So I mean, I'm a, like they're friends enough online. It was like with Taylor's girl group or whatever. Wait, is that Gigi Hadid? Yeah, she's friends with Gigi Hadid. Like, get the fuck out of here. That's Gigi fucking Hadid. She's like, you know, she's an she's a upper echelon girly. Let me tell you guys. Oh, my God. Okay. Let me, first of all, and this, this, this is the first time I'm actually seeing the era store because I have, it's just not what I'm into. But let me tell you why I'm kind of gagging right now. Did it, Mama, isn't she known for doing 13 Reasons Why? Yeah, she is. One show, right? And she's the girl. Let's go to her IMDb to kind of see what she's been doing. And this is not to get, ooh. Okay, so this has been to Fox News. So I do want to look at what Dominique's had to say. Dominique's. I want to look at what Dominique has to say, but I also want to look at what Fox News is saying just to get the the other, a different perspective. Okay, so... Wow. Okay, so she started with 13, 13 Reasons Why. Wait, where? Oh, 13 Reasons Why, 2017. Wow, it really... This is so interesting. Okay, so you got... So this resume that she has, if you just look at it, right? Like, these are short films, this is like a one episode. She did get the series regular. She did 18 episodes of 13 Reasons, and that's great. And then, like, these are, this is like a recurring guest star right here with Jane the Virgin. But, like, this is like a one off. This is a one off. <clears throat> oh, this isn't even a show. This is a, a, like a charity thing. I mean, her resume is not that expansive. I mean, she played a, I mean, she just played a bartender like she's credited as a bartender and like when you're credited like that it's not that big of a role so the reason I'm gagging is because I'm like <clears throat> how do you as someone who doesn't have as expansive a resume how have how are you now directing how are you friends with all of these like a-list celebrities and like mind you like I've worked with Tyler Perry 
I've lived across the way from Tyler Perry uh, in his studio and Tyler knows Beyonce and I'm not a part of the Beyonce group. Uh, I've worked with Viola Davis. I'm not a part of that group. I've worked with Kevin Bacon. I'm not a part of that group. Not that anyone has to, not that anyone has to bring me into these groups, right? Not that that is their duty, but I do see that white people who have associations with fame, they seem to, or not even white, just non-black, they seem to be really taken care of and enmeshed into a certain elite area of Hollywood that I just don't see. I don't see that with uh, Amaya Scott. I don't see that with Alexandra Gray. I don't see that with uh, Shauna brought up Tangerine. I don't see that with um, with our sister from Tangerine. Like I just, I don't see that. I, I mean, if I'm being honest, I don't even really see it with Angelica Ross. I mean, but yeah. I mean, if you look at it, it's a racial components you know like this is this is the racial stratification if you see the you know the the black girls the 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 mixed race girls in between and then the white girls you know you see those you see that that racial structural societal caste system actually in play you know and my, my thing is, is that like we have brought up Hunter Schaefer and the episode with Shauna Brooks, like Hunter Schaefer has like been really loved by all of Hollywood and and except like, you know, put on billboards and all of that. But at least we can say with Hunter, like, yeah, she got that off of one show, but at least it was a show that like broke the internet and broke the mold, right? I mean, 13 Reasons Why was, I, I didn't watch it personally, but it she was kind was, of Yeah, it was, it was I mean, it wasn't euphoria, but But do you understand that like, when she was on that show, she hadn't transitioned at that time, and I don't yeah. know if it was, if she was even giving that at that time Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm like she wasn't tr Tommy, Miss Tommy hadn't transitioned. And so I don't really, I, I don't even know where her, I, the only reason I know who Tommy Dorfman is, is literally because she's a transgender woman in Hollywood. That's the only reason why I know who she is. I had no idea who she was before then. And this is no shade. She was just another white, I don't want to misgender her or whatever, but she was a white on a show, white person on a show. And I, there was only two I really knew. I like I worked with one of the thirteen reason why people, and then there's like the main guy. That's all I really knew. And Selena Gomez in the background. So, let do you want to watch Dominique Morgan's video <clears throat> and see what she has to say? Yeah, she's gonna hit on an in, a point that I was trying to make, but I guess I could. I'm not the greatest person to make the point. I think you are. What do you mean? I mean, I. I mean, she speaks about passability and non-passability in a way that I can't necessarily Right, relate. right, right, right. Okay, I feel that. Okay, here we go. Genders you intentionally. So while she's talk, while he's talking, you're talking. You just misgendered me again. What instantly hits me when I watched this video on, on Twitter last night and now it's gotten to TikTok and now it's gotten to the blogs on Instagram. And then it gets, once it gets <laughs> to Facebook, it means it's everywhere, um, right? But I have been this person, I will be this person, the trans person that gets misgendered, no matter how much you think you look the way you're supposed to look for the world to affirm you. Um, this idea that there's enough that we can do as trans people to avoid those moments, I think is false. And at the root of the response is, in my opinion and in my experience is, in a moment when you want to be seen the most, that makes you feel like you're not being seen at all. Like you're in front of them, right? But the 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 work it's taken for you to get out of the house to exist, the the self talking you've done, all of that you've done to push yourself out into the world to experience the world, um, it hurts. That's one piece of the conversation. The other, the the, the next part is, 
There are real conversations that we need to have about the way that white trans people navigate the world versus the way that black trans people are allowed to navigate the world. Slash the number, the amount of work that black trans folks have to engage in to address issues, statements, um, uh, uh, theory for the trans community that is not based in our lived experience at all, is not coming from our mouths, because we are not the people who get platformed. We are not the people who get heard the most. If a black trans woman um, makes a video Talk. about a Delta employee um, misgendering them, it's not going to uh, Talk. Uh, seep into every crevice Talk. of social media because we don't matter to the common person because blackness does not matter in this country, right? And so what I'm trying to get to is that I believe a part of my work is to advocate for trans people, period, because they are a part of my community. And I don't agree with everything that every trans person does. And the experience of a white trans person is vastly different than mine. Um, so what you are watching in that video, the part that is activating you as a black person, if you watch this, uh, you are watching a white woman be a white woman. Because one of the most affirming things in my trans experience has seen is watching white trans men and white trans women navigate the world like their cisgender counterparts with with ease. You watched a white woman be a white woman. Was 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 there harm that happened? I, I think if you watched the whole video the first time, the young man was it was an accident. The second time, it was clearly intentional where he said she and then he went and said he to to put a dagger at him because he felt a certain way. Um, and and there's nuance in being bombard being bombarded with whiteness and being filmed and all of that. And you can still address white supremacy and those behaviors and not mm -hmm. be transphobic. I don't know why mm -hmm. that's the why that's what we reach for first. And in this instance, it's also interesting to watch this social media discourse for the queer people. So many people are more focused on him being attractive Gag. than you know his at and his number. Yeah. Um, and that's a deeper conversation where in black community and black queer community, <laughs> if you are your skin and conventionally attractive, you can pretty much do anything and, and you'll be forgiven and not called in for it too. Um, Y'all want to address white supremacy when it comes to um, this white trans woman, but y'all don't want to address white supremacy in the ways that y'all are parties to white supremacy through your white partners and other systems that you choose to be a part of. So there's this conditional faux um, kind of behavior that y'all are addressing the, the harm of this lady's whiteness towards this person of color. But it's really just all living under your transphobia and 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 really a lazy politic in mm -hmm. addressing harm and protecting all black folks um, from being mistreated and disrespected. Um, and last but not least, as a consumer, you know, it's hard in this world. It's it's hard to be black and go in the world, period. It's hard to be black and trans and navigate this world. It's even more gaggy when you spend $1,500 $1, or $2,000 mm -hmm. for a ticket and somebody plays in your face. You can't, we cannot buy ourselves out of transphobia, homophobia, racism, um, patriarchy, all the things. And those of us who get to experience luxury, I know there are moments that it feels like we are protecting ourselves through having that access, but these moments also show like none of us are safe from it. A, the dollar will not protect you. Um, it'll protect this white trans woman more than it would protect me. Um, because for me, I probably would, they would have probably called the police on me. It probably wouldn't have just been a threat. And that's the last thing Absolutely. I will say. I, I, would, I would like us as black and brown folks to not make a hobby, a practice of using the systems that will, will kill us, destroy us as a tool to think that we are going to get a gotcha on the most privileged in our community. Because even if you had called security to escort her, it was never going to feel the way a security would have escorted you or escorted She's you. She's not lying. I didn't come to make this video to say who is wrong and right. It was wrong for that. There was a second, again, a second moment when it was clear that he said she, and then he intentionally said he. That was not. That was mm -hmm. wrong. That was some bullshit. Everything else is a lot of gray. And I want us to be better at digging into layer topics. I want us to stop making our homophobia, our transphobia, mm -hmm. a Trojan horse mm. for black liberation. Well, she said it. <laughs> I hate that up. I hate it.
She ate it, ate it tarantula. Yeah, I mean, she hit on things that, so you know, smart. so, so intelligent. I think the reason I think it's intelligent is because, you know, I think white people have realized that we as black people have started to record them as a line of defense to, uh, to show, mm -hmm. what was her name? Amy Cooper, right? To yeah. show that like, you're calling the police on us, you're criminalizing us, you're, um, you're saying all this wild, racist, crazy shit. Um, and what we have seen them do is that they start to turn the cameras back around onto us and to say, well, this is what you're doing. And I, I think a lot of, you know, white people have, you know, they are used to seeing Karens on screen, but they don't understand that or they think they're slick, but like we understand that a Karen can hide behind the camera. A, Cam a, Car a Karen can be the holder of the camera and can frame a situation in a way that furthers, you know, the bullshit that she wants to, you know, put out into the world. Exactly. But I just want to know, what did she put on? Because she said, I'm going to, like, did she say, I'm going to get it on? Like, what was she getting on? <laughs> I say all that, and the caveat is, we don't know that Tommy was trying to cause him any harm. Yeah. We don't we don't know that that is something that she was doing. All we do know is that white people do a lot of bullshit a lot of the time. White people do a lot of bullshit a lot of the time. And as someone who is a black trans woman, I can tell you I've had many experiences and look, charity starts at home, you know. I'm I'm worried about my black community. I'm not worried about other communities initially right I'm worried about my black community and i could tell you i've seen many a times you know black men cis black men be transphobic and i've 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 seen that and so i'm not coming at this i'm i'm coming at this understanding like what he did in misgendering her is wrong can he have more compassion can he because when you misgender her you're not just misgendering her, you're misgendering all of us. It's kind of like when you yeah. get into it, it's I mean, like it's like when you get into it with a fat bitch. Why she gotta be a fat bitch? But you know what also too? Exactly. Um, but whatever happened to, in, in the words of Sheree, Sheree Whitfield, whatever happened to customer service? Whatever happened to customer service? Like whatever happened to customer service? Like truly, somebody had like, to say what, it. Like someone had to say it. Whatever happened to customer service? Like I, you know, it's really interesting, and it's because you know what? It is the capacity of Tommy's whiteness that has a part of it, but it's also Tommy's transness and how trans people are so attacked and so vulnerable in our community that 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 he felt emboldened to to do that and on camera on camera and i'm just like what are the customer service like I why also... couldn't just like why couldn't they just let it go like and pay it like because you know what here's the thing though and we maybe we we'll, we will see later I feel like in this moment, if Tommy was really giving them Karen, Karen fever, it would have been released, and and maybe it will be released. Maybe that that will be released, but it doesn't at this moment today. It doesn't seem to be the case, you know. Like, so I just wonder, like, what are we having a customer service? What are we having to just, just just getting through your day, you know? Like, but the reason why the reason why that there is no customer services because because now and we see this with people with black people participating in the trumpian movement they feel like now when they see trans people even though they're pocs they still feel above them because also now how it's been built out is that and we talked about this in another podcast these candace owen 
ish types of black people, you know, they feel like racism isn't a real thing it isn't a real thing because they believe in the structure that that they're participating in and and they've agreed on this one thing so they're the good kind so they can so they can in turn oppress other people and that's where and that's where that 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 gotcha moment you know where he thought he was gagging her and he kind of did gag her a little bit it was a key because he you know he gave he was like I was waiting for you at the door, but, and you know what, and you know what, for me, it gave that moment because you can look at how the right has like ate that moment up. They were just like, end woke transgender actress. Look at him end her. And I'm just like, whew, what a world we live in, you know, what a world we live in. Even, so, even, even this, even, and like, I'm, I'm going to finish on this point, you know, about it. Even it's just crazy. Cause even, um, the, the, the black Latino, the Afro Latino person who was a part of the proud boys who got convicted Enrique Tarvez or something, he was a part of the proud boys and he got convicted. And I was just like looking at him and I'm like, you look crazy because what, ha- what do you think is going to happen when, when they, when they, when they get done with us? You're in the leopards eat who you're in the leopards eat your face party. And Quay, what were you gonna add? You have to record everything now because if it's not recorded, no one will believe yeah. you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you must like if you want to if you want to have any sort of recourse, you have to you have to record. And I'm gonna let you know, like, I've had many run-ins with um with people and in customer service uh, areas because for 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 many reasons because men want to pick on me because people are racist I mean you name it like I've had many run-ins like recently um, I was at my grocery store and this guy was like what's taking you so long in the checkout line and I said I'm I said nothing actually I was looking for coupons on my phone and he was like, no, 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 it's my job to make sure that everything is fine here. So he was like trying to micromanage me. And I said, you're not about to roll up on me. And so, you know, we had an exchange and he did bring over, um, you know, the security walked over. And I don't know if y'all have this like out in New York, but here in LA, I don't know why they started doing this maybe like 10 years ago or maybe like seven years ago. All the security guards in these grocery stores are fully armed. Mm-hmm. It's like that in New York. They're fully armed. I I have a note. I don't think they're fully armed, actually. They're no. fully armed. Full gun, everything, everything on their hip, everything. And a lot of them are off-duty cops. And so when this dude comes over, the security guard comes over, he's coming over, and this man could fucking shoot me because I'm fucking getting into it with a cashier at Ralph's what the fuck and there's nothing wrong with being a cashier at Ralph's but I'm saying like you gonna shoot me because I got into it with the checkout person at Ralph like that's insane so it I oftentimes think Quay you can't you know you can't get too hyphy with these people because one you have the public profile you you know what I mean? You're the public person. Mm-hmm. I just feel like as a public person, what often goes to my mind is sometimes you do just have to pay it. Like I know we're saying like yeah. the guy, the 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 guy who's working at the airline, like he if you're a working customer service, it is the protocol to just pay things, like to just pay it or to just be like, Oh, you know what? Let me get somebody else for you or whatever. You know what I mean? Or just walk away. But honestly, I think that there's a case to where she needed to just pay it as well. But I feel like Libs at TikTok saying this is a power trip. Uh, you know, I mean, anything Libs at TikTok say, I instantly tune out because like, no, I can't even, I can't even put like, I can't even Miss Chaya, right chick. If Don't say her me- name. If you say her name, you, you doxed her. Girl, bye. Um, where she tried, she tried to have a she she tried to come for AOC, and it's a kiki moment. Go Google that. 
Um, but girl, I I think that I think it's a nuanced situation, and I think like like Dominique said, there is gray. But again, I don't think it's that nuanced, though. Well, I, I mean, I, think I don't it's... think it's that nuanced. I think always race comes into the the this the situation, but like in class, of course. But I don't think it's that nuanced. At least, at least from what we saw, from what we see, is that they had a fucking they had a tense exchange, and that tense exchange could have started because of racism, and it also could have started because of transphobia. It could have started because of classism as well. But what we saw on on tape is that we see this man misgendering her and people go, oh, well, maybe he didn't know. You know that that's a fucking tranny. Stop. He lives in New York. He's not, he doesn't have access to the same fucking internet we, that we do. Like he's not living in the woods. He's in New York fucking city. Come on. And even even if you didn't know. that's That's the only part that is black and white. I think because we don't have the footage of what transpired, that's the gray part of it. Tommy, release the footages. Miss Tommy, let us know what happened. Delta, release the footages, Delta. Look, I, I mean, for for me, I just don't think it's black and white because I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this. I'm not even gonna hold you, and then you can you you can finish us off on this because I do want to talk to you about something else. I'm not gonna hold you. I'm a black trans woman. I've had many experiences with 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 black cis man men. Right, a lot of them are lovely. A lot of the men, a lot of the black men I've gotten to work with are lovely. In my personal, not professional, but in my personal life, I have I've had experience with with black cisgender men and it has been on some transphobic bullshit so it is it's it doesn't it it it, 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 you know it doesn't it's not too much too crazy for me to think whoa 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 now if other information comes out other information comes out but it's like come on i think that i think even i mean even the the voice of the previous co-worker you could tell she you know you could tell she was one of you know a black woman from new york and you know, like we like, and I, it was this, it was this, um, someone did research and they were saying that they were, they were just like saying that black people are not more inherently homophobic and inherently more transphobic than, than any other race. And it was like a study that I, and or whatever. And I, I disagree with that so much because because when you, when you hold a mirror between like black trans people getting murdered versus white trans women, Black trans women success stories versus white trans women. There is a clear, there is a clear difference in how, and how we are treated. And 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 black people are more transphobic. We, black people are more transphobic, and that's that's something that people don't want to talk about. But it's true. It's I. It's I think white people. I mean, if if I were to like, if we were to like, kind of discuss like what maybe are they getting at? I think white people are transphobic in just a very different way. I think they take their transphobia and 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 embolden it systemically. I think they. I think it's the Marjorie you know Taylor Greens and the Jeremy Borings. Exactly. Like we but don't. You know what? We don't see black people making platforms off of this. That that's absolutely true. But I'm talking about the day-to-day life of black trans women. That's what I'm talking about. That's systemically, of course, systemically, of course. But when you, when you, when you look at the homeless shelters, who are in the homeless shelters predominantly, you know, and, and, and when you, when you look at the, when you look at the, the girls who are getting killed, it's black trans women, you know, predominantly. And I think that, I mean, yeah, I think, I think it's because I think that's, black that's, people, that's, that's, I think, that's I think, because of what? I think because black people, um, all black people are just at more of a probability to be murdered, to be incarcerated and to be homeless. And so that, I think once you add transits on top of that, I think that they, we are already just more exposed to that. I think when it comes to wait, white people, they're just, that doesn't, that doesn't neutralize the inherent problem. Oh yeah. That doesn't neutralize it. The inherent problem is still there. There is a huge 
transphobic problem in the community that actually has a lot of systemic ramifications in ways where Black trans women are being put at risk a lot and not uplifted a lot of the times. Because, I mean, here's the thing, like, well, who's like, gonna uplift and, us? I think the only, I think the only people, the who, who's gonna uplift us? I think the only people that that could, right, would be the Tyler Perrys of the world. But um, and, oh my God, since we're bringing up Tyler Perry, I don't even want to. But you know what? I, I mean, I think I that. But this is why this is this is this is. But you know, this conversation that we're having now about the black community versus like Tommy being a white woman. The, that's the gray that I'm talking about in this situation that we need to like, of course, not in this very moment, but it needs to be talked about more and dissect it, you know, because, and this is why I am such a firm, like I love Kimberly Crenshaw. I love her theory of intersectionality because when we start really baking into the intersectionalities of this situation, it's really, it's, and this is why I say it's, it's nuanced, you know? It's, and I think, and I think to speak for this to Dominic's point, you know, like no shade, him kicking Tommy Dorfman out, it hits different than if he would have kicked, if he would have kicked Dominique, uh, Dominique Morgan out, you know what I mean? And, and that's not even on a, a fame or privilege level, you know, that's, that's on a racial dynamic that we, that, that, ha that needs to be talked about, you know? Yeah, I wonder if they if they actually would have right if peop, they would have actually escorted her out. I wonder if if they would have. Look, I have seen people get crazy in airports. Let's just say that they just had a whole thing of like these two gay men. They were going in. Um, these two gay men were going in, and I've seen people yell at the airport get into shouting matches. I've seen people do all people. What you got to understand about the airport is that it's something about that airport. People, people are really terrified to fly and something triggers, triggers people in their mind and they kind of lose their mind. So. I mean, the airport is not, just, the airport I mean, is just, I mean, it's, it's just not like, like you said, it's conducive to some bullshit happening. 